Hey guys, how we doing? Ben Groen down here at the World Barefoot Center. The wind's blowing, so today we're doing a little bit of dry land, and I think it'd be the perfect time to talk to you guys at home about dry land training a little bit. Go over some of the key things to focus on when doing your dry land at home, as well as the best kind of setup to get you ready for the next season. So we got two different types of uh, dry land tool here in the garage. The one on the right we're gonna use today uh, is a special fabricated piece, the dry lander from Australia. The one on the left here is just like a homemade job, super cheap, super effective. Now, the reason I love using a pulley system so much when it comes to your dry land training is it really forces you to use proper position and technique. Far too often I see people with the rope, you know, fixed to the wall or tied on a doorknob and they're leaning against that the whole time and there's no response there. You're just leaning up against the rope and you're creating a load, a constant load the whole time where when you go on the water, you're gonna end up being more of a plow position, leaned away and that kind of stuff. Here, I've only got 25 pounds on the end of my dry land plate. But as you can see, when I'm skiing, I can pull the handle in and out. It's gonna want me to pull forward. So you're training your body to resist that pull at the waist, keeping a strong back. While also, if I lean too far, I'm gonna go back out the other way. So it really forces you to stay on top of your feet and it gives you that response of too far forward, too far back, everything you do, especially once you get into the surface turns. So number one, tension in that line, okay? When you're using the pulley system, you've got automatic feedback of where your tension is. And far too often I see people with that rope hooked up to a door or a wall or something like that, where they're constantly just pulling on that rope, but there's no feedback of how much load they're generating. You don't want to load up and lean back like that on the water, so you don't want to reinforce those bad habits on land either. You want to find that point where that pulley's up in the air, you've got tension in that rope, but if I break forward, it drops down. If I lean back, it comes up. You want to find that sweet spot, and then you want to do all of your tricks and skiing in that sweet spot where that pulley can float there, and you're keeping constant tension in your line. Number two is body position. So when we're on dry land, we're trying to reinforce as many good habits as possible. So you want to really make sure that you're always staying stacked on top of your feet. This is where, again, the pulley comes in handy. If I'm leaning away, I'm going to pull on that pulley. And if I'm weak in my core, it's going to pull me forward a lot. So you want to make sure you're in that strong, dynamic, barefooting position. Knees over the ankles, shoulders over your hips where you're nice and stacked and strong. I'm not breaking forward at the waist. I'm not leaning away against my pulley. You're right in the middle there in that sweet spot where you can do all your one foots, toe holds, surface turns, same thing backwards, right on top of my feet. I'm not leaning away where I'm gonna fall over if I let go of the rope, but I'm strong enough and I'm broken at the waist where it's not pulling me over as well. Number three is feet on the ground. Um, this is another one that's often overlooked, I feel, and when people are sending me videos of their dry land, ask me to critique their form and stuff, this is something I always try to get them to focus on. Uh, when you're out there barefooting on the water, you want to be as flat and on top of your feet as possible. Same goes from in here. Um, I see far too many people, not so much forwards, especially backwards and especially through their turns. When they get a turn, they turn and they pick up and they ski to the back on their toes, really keeping their heels off the water, like they're overly conscious of catching the heels. You're not going to catch your heels in here, that's for sure and your body wants to preserve itself out there, you're not gonna catch your heels out there either. So you wanna really focus on, especially turning, and again, backwards, flat feet, feet flat on the ground, through all of those turns, surface turns and such. So when you're in the back here, I can really work on my ankle mobility and my flex, and I'm not trying to pick up my toes the whole time. Uh, another tell that you're doing something wrong and you're pushing your toes through that turn, and a lot of time I'll see people go to turn, and they step, and then when they get to the back, they've lost their tension, their feet are a bit funny, and they've got to readjust, and then turn around again. And they get to the front, and they readjust. You shouldn't have to keep readjusting your feet. You want to keep them in one location through all the turns. So when you're turning, you get to the back, your hair, and you're ready to go again. And you're always turning right on top of your feet, always flat on the ground. So those are the three main things you want to focus on with your dry land this off season. Okay, tension in that line, nice body position, and always keeping your feet flat and flexed on the ground. Like I always tell people that come down to the school, like you're more than welcome to send me a video, let me critique your dry land. If you've got any questions, you wanna keep building the good habits, you don't wanna reinforce bad habits over this off season. 
See me in those videos. Keep training hard.